This is 50 liters of immersion cooling. This is a thermal take showcase in their new IX700 case. Uh, it is an immersion cooling solution, which means that the fans, even though they are spinning, they are in liquid. The liquid is a POA2, it's called. This is apparently one of the more economical ones, but still very expensive. So it's supposed to be about 20 to $30 per liter, and there's 50 liters in there. Uh, basically, the reason this is cool is not only is the stuff actually sitting in the liquid, but it's piped through these gigantic pipes, which are rated for, let me check my notes here, uh, because it was insane. I think it's 20 bar. It's a 20 bar oil hose is what that's running through. That comes over to this, and this is four radiators with a bunch of different Distro plates, pumps and rads and everything, all for cooling and exchanging the liquid that the computer's immersed in. So it's kind of like, a, it's it's a showcase. It's more of an enterprise solution, uh, but it's super cool and I want to talk about it. They also have some consumer stuff. So on the consumer side, we'll be talking about the TR200, the TR300, which are larger variants of the similar design TR100 mini ITX case. So they've got MATX and ATX. And then they also have a, a VU390 Air, which is pretty interesting. So it's a glass top curved around the top and side. Uh, and then Thermal Takes looking for some feedback on what type of fans to include with that. I've got my preference, but we'll look at it in a minute. And then finally, we'll be talking about the liquid cooling a little bit. So there's a Mine Cube, which has some familiar font on the board above it. And I will say the Mine Cube is a, a legally distinct Mine Cube. Let's get into Thermal Takes booth. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Antec Flux series of cases. We previously benchmarked and independently reviewed the Flux Pro case and found it to be one of the best cases we tested last year. The Flux Pro features the modern trend of wood accents while also focusing on a high airflow design. We found its performance to be among the best in our thermal testing. The case also has a number of ease of installation features to make assembly and kale management easier. Learn more at the link in the description below. So we'll start with the cool immersion cooling stuff. This is a CPU load they're running. So they currently have the CPU at 100% load, GPU's at 100% load. It's an Intel W9-3495X, which is definitely a name you could have. And then for the temperature, uh, so CPU core temperature is at about 60 degrees in a room that feels like it's about 23 degrees Celsius. And I will say I am very in tune with ambient temperature from over a decade of thermal testing. So I'm pretty confident in that number. Uh, GPU is at about 64 for at least the one that's exposed here. There's two GPUs in there. Uh, so basically this is running four pumps, four rads. They're 420s, there's four of them. And uh, those are 64 millimeters thick. And then they're thinking maybe like a build to order enterprise type of solution. That's the radiators as you'd expect. Coming around the back here. Wow, it is warm. You can feel the, uh, feel the heat coming off. So on the back side, inside there's it's kind of like a distro plate basically huge pipes are coming in here they're hitting the tubes splitting to the radiators that's how you get your supply and return of the dielectric fluid which is what this is a dielectric liquid uh, which means it is non-conductive that's how they can sink it in there and then this is the absolutely ridiculous <laughs> hose that they have for the exchange i i don't think they need to be able to endure the amount of pressure this hose probably can I don't know what industry this comes from. Please let me know because I tried to ask and they don't know either, but uh, it's just it's just the exchange for all the liquid. Now, one thing I would think because of the viscosity and the th sort of thickness of the liquid, there's some different requirements than just water, but we just thought it was cool. I mean, immersing computers in a, in a liquid is, it's always a cool thing to see at a show. Uh, definitely can make sense for enterprise solutions. Gigabyte's done it, but let's move over to some of the consumer stuff. All right, so now we're at the View 390 Air. If it sounds like I'm going fast, it's it's because I'm at a racetrack, apparently. So uh, we're not going to talk about that stuff today. It's not what we cover, but they're getting into more sim racing stuff. So the V390 Air is a $150 case. This is the one where Thermal Take is seeking feedback. How's the audio? Can you hear how fast I am, Vitaly? Uh, they, they're thinking about including two fans. It's just a question of, is it two fans in the back or is it two fans maybe in the front? Uh, and to hit $150, it's probably going to be just two from what they were telling me. So uh, my personal thought is you can leave your comment below before I answer, but I would lean towards, if possible, including the two 120 or two 200s rather in the front, rather than doing fans anywhere else. And the reason for that 
is just because for included fans, I like the idea of including the one that people are least likely to already have or to get with their liquid cooler. And 200s are least likely, I think, uh, if someone's going to mount an AIO, it's going to go on the side. It's going to have three fans already, so that takes care of that. So it really, it's just going to be the front or the back that they're looking at for the choice. Um, I, I feel like the two fronts should work better, and the reason is, so this glass provides obviously a solid wall all the way around the case, and interestingly, closing off the top panel can work better sometimes. It is very situational, but uh, the reason that closing it can work better for, perform for CPU thermal performance in particular is because when you push the air in, it's not able to escape out through the top. And in a situation where uh, you've got a tower cooler or something that can actually help with performance. So anyway, they're looking for feedback on what kind of fans to include uh, for the $150 mark. The glass is four to five millimeters thick, so it's a very large glass. It is a slide lock, and uh, then inside, there's this screen that's mounted above the motherboard. That is optional. They do that on basically everything where it's like a separately purchasable screen. Uh, if you don't buy the screen, then there's supposed to be a plate, from what I understand. I think it's just a steel plate that closes it off. Uh, and then they have all the different colors that you can see here. So anyway, that is the View 390 Air. Um, quick fan specs, they've got the 3120 spots on the bottom, they're sunken, three in the side, the two 120s in the back that are vertically stacked, which is this we've been seeing more of, and I actually do like seeing that when there's vertical room for it, uh, but it does make the case a lot taller. And then up to two 200s in the front. Let's move over to one of the other cases. So these are the TR200 and 300. I'm still at the racetrack. I don't know how that picks up. Uh, this is the TR100 that we've already looked at. They just have different colors of them. So that's kind of the origin for where these are going now. This is a micro ATX case. It's supposed to be an $80 price point. I don't have the final fan spec yet. The TR300 is a $100 case. Uh, no riser for either of them because it's not necessary. It's just a normal GPU horizontally installed. And then they're using a newer TFT panel for this, which Thermaltake says has better brightness. They say it has better resolution than their prior panels. Uh, and then for the case itself, actually, this is a, a prototype wood panel. So they've got wood on a bunch of cases that are already out, and they're playing around with it on a more. So that trend is still going from the last couple of years. Coming over to the side here, so other than the uh, Yeston-inspired marketing materials on the pump block here, Thermal Take has a closed off side to try and obscure the power supply and the cables because the power supply is mounted to the front and it's rotated on its side like that. So that does limit their options for intake fans in the front. Unfortunately, they were gonna rely on the bottom for intake and some on the side which can be passively brought in on the opposite side. Now, this particular case, uh, the bottom is not that elevated. The TR200 has a lot more room at the bottom to breathe, which I like seeing. This one, I, I would like to see it elevated a little more. It does increase the size, though. And then they're looking at Q3 for launch for these. Actually, most of the stuff here today is Q3. Some of it is somewhat immediate. All right, so this is the Mine Cube. Now, the font here for the Mine Cube might look somewhat familiar, and so does the coloring. And actually, so does kind of the background, and, and so do these things, like the definitely not the actual door texture from a game that has intellectual property but this is legally distinct that's all we can say about it so it's uh four-sided screens so they've got top and then three sides for the, the screens on the cooler block and it sockets like that sits on top of a vrm fan and ram fan now my only piece of kind of feedback on this was there's no vent here to hit the top part, the north side of the VRM, but they are able to get into this side of the VRM. And I, mean, I can feel the airflow, so that would pick up on a, an anemometer or something. They are hitting that heat sink, which is good. And then this side also has a slat for air to exit, and that's able to hit the first RAM stick at least. I'd like to see a cut through there though. But internally, pretty simple. So there's some slats. Uh, the only place that the fan's able to really get air is through this side which is on this early, early model, so they're, they're really not ready with this yet. It's not a final product. There's just cuts in the side at an angle here. This can be reoriented to display the screens to whichever side you want. And uh, as far as technology, the challenge with something like this uh, is a couple of them. First one is gonna be software. So software is a big challenge where if you wanna be able to link the screens in any way, uh, that's gonna require some special programming. They actually have a video playing where the character moves across the screen, so they are interacting with each other in that way. Uh, the other challenge, though, is cost 
and cost, especially with controlling the screens. So Thermal Take, to try and fix this, has gone to a single IC to control all four screens. They still end up at about $350 or so for the 360 model, which is the only one we know of right now. That comes with the SWA fans on it. And uh, when I asked, you know, what's, what are like the technological challenges of trying to drive four screens through a liquid cooler? And the answer was pretty funny. It, the answer to what's the technical challenge was not making it $600, which is a totally valid answer. And I think everyone can agree with that. Uh, so anyway, they're targeting August for this. And a similar platform to the V3 coolers that Thermal Take has, which are also here. Uh, and by platform, I mean the pump, the cold plate, the radiator, that stuff similar. There's apparently some changes. We don't have all the details on that yet because they're just not ready yet. And then related to that, right next to Vitaly here, this is the Project Edge set of fans. This is also an early prototype where they've, uh, you can see actually the trade show engineering. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to coin that word now where they have used adhesive to secure it to the fans, but that's okay, it's a prototype. Uh, and it's just screens that also continually uh, you know, progress the image across them. So that's where Thermal Take thinks the future of fans might be, where everyone's been doing screens on the hub. So Leanne Lee makes ungodly amounts of money from selling fans with LCDs on them. Uh, and now the direction might be LCDs on the side of fans. Personally, I'm looking forward to changing my motherboard for a motherboard made out of LCDs. I think it'll be MSI that does it first. That will cover Thermal Takes Booth though, so a lot of cases that are interesting to us. The immersion coin's the most fun for me, but otherwise, uh, leave your feedback for them on the fan configuration for the 390 that we looked at, because they're looking for comments and feedback on it, and subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.